What's going on guys? Spencer here with HM Massage, back with another video. Gonna try to do the impossible task of pleasing everybody. <laughs> so I just uploaded this long massage, and I did it with no talking and no music, because I simply got a request to do that. But of course I always like to do the commentary, and I like to teach, spread the word of massage, get people that maybe don't know about body work interested in this awesome modality. So I decided to do a follow along step by step back massage here to really teach you guys how to do these techniques. Start with very long light strokes called effleurage. That's a Swedish technique and that's simply the way to warm up the body and warm up the person's back and their muscles. So first off, thank you so much to everybody for the support. Not only on this last video, I greatly appreciate all the likes, all the views, and that people seem to be enjoying them, but just on the channel in general. I'm happy I get to keep making these massage videos and that people seem to actually enjoy them. So you guys rock. Keep on liking the videos if you do like them, and subscribe if you are new here and you want to see more massage. I could flip this video, flippy floppy just to switch it up since you guys just watched this back massage. But let's start to get into some of the techniques. Now I'm not going to talk throughout the whole 30 minute video and some of the parts I might speed up a little bit because when you see me do long, deep, slow holds, I'm really just holding for a very long time, which is a good testament to how slow you have to go with true deep tissue massage. But it's also kind of stagnant to look at sometimes, so I might just talk over those. But of course right now I'm warming up each of the body, using my fingers to work all around the scapula, that's their shoulder blades, and really just applying lotion anywhere that their skin feels dry. It doesn't have to be lotion, I get this question a lot. I use a biotome lotion, but you can use lotion, oil, cream, there's massage gel out there. Really whatever floats your boat and is going to make your massage the best it can be. But this is probably the first step into actually doing a transition to deep pressure. So I've turned my hands into knuckles and I'm starting right at the edge of her spine. Very important, I'm not touching her spine. You're never pressing on the spine. And then using my knuckles, I'm dragging the muscles away from her center line. Those are the erector spinaeus muscles, the latissimus, your lats, the obliques. And I follow that up by doing a deeper effleurage with the palm of my hand, sinking into the mid traps and those rhomboids all intermedial to the shoulder blades. Work that into the second good warm-up move, which is petrissage. That is a lifting, squeezing technique. And you can see me, I'm lifting, squeezing her neck muscles, her traps, and all the cervical muscles that hold up our head. Your head on average is about eight pounds, and those muscles are holding them up all day. So those muscles can get really tired from doing all that work taking that petrissage right into one of my favorite moves. I'm kind of blocking the camera, but I'm using my knuckles to do a circular deep stroke on her traps, and I'm pushing more outward, really pushing those shoulders away from her neck, creating that space and alleviating that tension, of course. I'm adding more pressure here than the effleurage at the beginning, but I wouldn't say that this is really deep tissue yet. You'll notice I'll do quite a bit of warm up, five to 10 minutes, even in just a one hour massage. And get more into specific circular motion with the fingertips on the neck. All right, now we transition right into the first time of using the forearms. So we've already been at this massage five and a half minutes. And now I feel the body is not only lubricated enough, but warmed up enough that I can come in with a light forearm. A light forearm? What? Isn't forearm only supposed to be deep tissue? No. If you have control over your forearms and elbows, 
you can still do a very light, long gliding stroke with the forearms, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm really not applying a ton of pressure, but naturally the forearm itself is going to give more pressure, but it's also going to be a much broader stroke, so it can feel really good. Notice my hand and wrist is relaxed. It's not sticking outright like I'm saluting the Lord of Massage. I am keeping my wrist and hands for the most part let go. They're just kind of dropping. And that's very important when you're using your forearms because if you're stiffening up your hand and wrist when you use your forearms, you're not really giving your hands a break. So you can see I did it right there where I just kind of twirled my fingers and let them go. And I remember thinking during the massage, I'm going to twirl my fingers so that people really can see what I'm talking about. So there you go. And going back to that circular petrissage on the neck here is just a really good transition move in order to get to the other side of the body. So although the focus right now in my mind is incorporating my forearms, I've kind of made the decision, okay, we're going to go deeper, so I need to get my forearms there. In order to transition to the other side, I simply wanted to do a little petrissage on the neck because you never really want to break contact a lot with a client. Breaking contact with one hand to get lotion or whatever is totally fine. If you have to scratch your back, go for it. But try not to break contact with both hands. Don't walk around the room, don't do some jumping jacks, because then the client is gonna be wondering, where are their hands at? Why are they not massaging me? So always try and maintain long, good contact. And when I use the forearm, I'm using my ulna bone, that's your pinky side bone, and my olecranon process, which is your elbow. And I'm doing these in a very controlled manner. When I start at the bottom, I'm really sinking into their erector spinaeus muscles, but also the lower lats. Your lats do reach down almost all the way to your sacrum. And then I work up into the rhomboids and traps. Once I've fully warmed up the entirety of the back, I've kind of touched over everything, and that was all warm up. I have now dropped their arm on the side because we're gonna start going into some deep rotator cuff, some deltoid work, their arm. Here I will be doing some tricep petrissage, which is a really good technique for the triceps. And the big thing, their arm draped on the side like this, not only will it allow you to really get deep on the lats, the teres minor and major, and the infra and supraspinatus of the rotator cuff, but it's gonna open the space between their rib gauge and their iliac crest, which is their hip bone. And with that space open, that allows me, and you'll see it in a minute, to really sink into her low back muscles, primarily the QL. A lot of muscles are responsible for low back pain, but the QL is kind of the primary culprit when it comes to low back pain. And so that's what you'll see me sinking in. But for now, I'm simply doing the lats and Terry stroke with the palm of my hand. Trying my best, you can't see my body mechanics, but I'm trying my best to keep my body straight and not in too weird of a twisted position. Of course, it's gonna happen a little bit, especially when filming, but body mechanics are important for a therapist, of course. And right here is right when I start to sink in to her QL and erector spinaeus muscles. And the reason my forearm and elbow can fit here is because the arm is draped on the side opening up the space of her lumbar area. I'll speed this up just a little bit because this is about a minute and a half hold on the same muscle, just because it's very tight and it takes a long time to relax. And you'll see her kind of take some deeper breaths and that's because this area is also very tender 
but I am working well within her limit of pain, and you always have to work within a client's limit. Any therapist that says toughen up and just deal with it, that is not a good approach to deep tissue massage, because everyone has different, uh, everyone has a different capacity of what they can handle, and if something is too painful and their muscles fight back, that's very counterproductive to what you're trying to do. And you'll see me come out of the hold finally, once again very slowly and controlled, and after you do a very deep tissue hold like that, or any deep tissue strokes, you always want to make nice to the area. So go over it lighter, bring back some blood flow, and make nice. Just do some TLC. I'm kind of stretching out with the softer side of my forearm here. Found a few tight areas, so I decided to revisit them. But overall, once the hold's done, I'm gonna make nice and then put the arm back up and transition over to the other side. Oh, almost forgot about the bread and butter of an HM massage. I absolutely love this technique. I'm kind of blocking it. But I use the ulna side of my forearm and the elbow to sink upward into the trap. Not only does this push the trap up and back, which creates space, but I'll then use the point of my elbow to really bend it and target at the insertion of the levator scapula, which hurts on everybody, and supraspinatus and trapezius. Your levator scapula is simply the shoulder muscle that connects your scapula or shoulder blade to your neck, and everybody gets tight there because we live in a world of stress, computers, driving, you name it, it's probably going to tighten up your neck and levator. So this is another great area to sink the elbow in very deep and then hold. And you can see quite a bit of blood flow on her neck right there. I'll then make nice to the upper back, work a little bit more with the deltoids, really pulling them away from the pecs. And that's because our shoulders are often rolled forward for the same reasons I just mentioned. So it really helps to pull the deltoid away, work those anterior or front fibers, and kind of traction her shoulder away from the rest of her body, really creating the space. Kind of like that old medieval torture device that would stretch you four ways but not quite to the extent of ripping tendons, simply for therapeutic benefit of traction and stretching. I'll make nice and then transition to the other side where I'm basically gonna recreate everything I just did. So this one I'll just let you guys watch because it is almost the same exact routine as I just did on her right side, but recreate for both sides because you have to balance out your massages and you want your client to leave feeling balanced, not like they're gonna fall over to one side.
All right, we've switched angles again. Transition, ooh. And now we're going on the front here and I'm gonna show you how to really work the mid scapular region, the middle of the back. Probably the number one complaint that most people have when they come to get a massage. And so you'll see I'm lifting the front of her shoulder with my left hand but then I'm coming in with my right hand and using my fingertips to really start to work under the scapula and create some space. A big common mistake that people do here is number one, they use their thumbs. Never use your thumbs here. Our mid back is way too strong for someone to jam their thumb into those muscles and not injure themselves. So try not to use your thumbs. And another common mistake is they go too deep too quick. Even though we've done 20 minutes of warm up, the traps will fight back if you come at them from a weird angle or too hard. So make sure that you're able to sink in through all the muscles. You're not feeling any twitching back at you or any hard surface. But I use my fingertips to warm up there, coming in with a deep specific deep trigger point hold as well as just deep friction. I'm gonna do it for both sides to warm up and then you'll see me come in with my forearm as well. Right here is one of the few cross body techniques I like to do where I'm pulling at her traps, levator and supra. You'll hear me say those three words a lot with the upper neck as well as the rhomboids. So this is a good warm up, but it's also getting in there pretty deep. So did the same techniques to the other side. I will also then take my knuckles and go the reverse direction. This is nice because it fights against a lot of the direction of the fibers, which creates a deeper stroke and deeper pressure feel to the client. I didn't do it in this video, but I will then most likely in a real massage, bust in with my forearm and elbow and create some really deep pressure especially if the client can handle it and they're very tense. She wasn't too tight here, uh, which is great. But for somebody who really wants the ringer dinger of a massage, I will bust out the forearm and go for it. But using the knuckles and more of the fingertips to just keep working deeper and more specific, finding any adhesions, any areas of stickiness or trigger points, or muscle knots and working them until they release or holding them until they release. I will then finish of course with making nice with the area. You always go from warming up to very specific and deep back out to broad and light and that is to cool them down make nice to the areas that you just treated and get them feeling relaxed and ready to go about the rest of their day after their massage. Thank you so much for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and this style of more talking, more commentary. Give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the channel for new content every single week. I just did karate chops there, but you can't see them. I will see you guys on the next video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.